This one's gonna be pretty hard, but at least there won't be any freaking ice physics. I think this is also when the level design starts to take a turn for the better, at least coming off the last world. So in the last world, everything was ice physics, there was no getting away from it. And bottomless pits were just about everywhere, because I think the idea was that we were climbing, like, this ice cliff or something. But now we're in this weird factory, so I guess it makes sense for there to be a lot wide open, a lot more wide open level design. Or at least, not so many bottomless pits that I have to stop every, like, five seconds, slip and slide around, and then inevitably fall off the edge of a cliff. So, um, this is one piece of scenery and one setting that you might not expect in this game. You might think that I wouldn't like it, because I've, I've gone on record saying that... Uh, the reason I prefer Donkey Kong Country 1 over its successor so much, a uh, big part of that is because of the setting and the atmosphere that this one gives, and how naturalistic it is, and how uh, in tune with nature kind of the music and the setting makes you feel. Um, so this is a complete departure from that, we're in like an artificially created factory, I guess the Kremlins made this, uh, something like that, but I kind of like this one because it's just a, a very stark contrast to the rest of the game. You get up to the top of the mountain, you find out that this factory has been built uh, by the Kremlins, and uh, something doesn't really feel right about it, you know, it's all artificial, it's mechanical. And I feel like the music conveys that almost near perfectly, I feel like this is another masterful track. Um, it kind of reminds me where, like a trope in some RPGs is that, especially when you have like high fantasy RPGs or something like that, they encounter something that is, you know, very technologically advanced or something like that, very futuristic, something that does not belong in their world. And I guess this, uh, this level kind of, kind of gives me the same feeling if you, like, pay attention to the soundtrack. I don't know, it's kind of tough to put into words, but I, I really kind of get that from the music that plays during this level, that you've reached something foreign, you've reached something that doesn't belong, you've reached something that doesn't feel quite right. And I, I think that's a, a pretty fantastic contrast to what we've seen from the rest of the game so far. And let me try not to die this time. I hate how it spams these projectile enemies, man. The projectile enemies are not my freaking friend. I'm just gonna run past you guys this time. Do not engage, don't even worry about it. I like how the oil barrels are here as well. The timing on these is gonna be pretty tricky. Stay out of the way. There's so much for there not being like a bountiful amount of bottomless pits here. I think the, the trick with these oil barrels, like why would you put that in the foreground like directly in front of my view? Is that you can stand on them like a split second after, ooh. That was a, that was a risky jump. A split second before, like, the fire ends. Something like that. Well, I, I could've gone a little bit before, but the timing gets, like, pretty... Oh! Pretty specific, because there's another barrel-throwing monkey up here. I mean, granted, it's a cool callback to, you know, OG Donkey Kong, throwing some barrels and things like that, I suppose, but... Again, yeah, these are the oil barrels that are on a timer. One, two, three, and then we go. Because I gotta go fast. <laughs> Wrong game for that, but I don't know how this tire is just kind of uh, sitting here. <laughs> just in midair, not doing anything, but... Okay, now we go... Oh boy, I'm kind of shocked I did that on the first try. And that's the exit, okay. I would say, in general, that was a lot easier than all those ice physics levels that we had in the previous world. Trick, track, trek, huh? Oh, is this the one with the, the fuel barrels? Oh, I think it is. Oh, no, 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 it's not, okay. There's one level later on, I think it might be in the next world, not necessarily this one, that is very stressful because you're on a moving platform like this, it's an auto-scroller level, and you have to, like, keep getting fuel for it and things like that. That's a very stressful level, doesn't look like this is that one, though, so... Don't have to worry about it just yet. But if I recall correctly, this one's going to be challenging because we have to deal with the plethora of enemies that this level is going to throw at us, um, when we do not have a whole lot of space to work with here. We're just kind of on this this nondescript oh, floating platform. Oh my god, okay. I saw that DK barrel and then I realized, oh, I already have DK. Oh, now I don't have Diddy, so I need to be on the lookout for that. God, I'm more with the ranged enemies. Can we stop it? Like, it's hard enough when I have all the room to maneuver in the world, but... Ah! Okay, okay. We're, we're doing fine. Where's that checkpoint barrel? Where's my checkpoint barrel game? I mean, we've gone a, a pretty decent way into this. Or at least give me like a Diddy barrel or something like that. Yeah, screw you guys, man. I think that's another reason why I prefer Tropical Freeze so much, and oh my god, it sped up so much. <laughs> because, um, you just have so much more, uh, like, space on the screen to work with, you know? You can actually see things coming, unlike this guy who's gonna fall directly on top of me. Okay, he ended up not doing that. Oh! Okay, is it gonna be better to actually have Diddy in the lead position here? Maybe not, because I think what the game is gonna do is gonna throw to me some enemies, um, that only DK can take out, so... It might be better to just... Oh god, how is this gonna... Gonna fall on top of me? Okay. 
I forgot where my train of thought was right there, by the way, but... <laughs> yeah, this, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah, I thought that would happen. Send the big guys at me. So if you're Diddy, I guess screw you. You can't take care of them. Although if you're Diddy, you're having a lot easier time with these jumps anyway. Oh god, here comes another one. Or not. Okay, yeah, just stand there. That's fine. I've got to time these freaking coconuts. They kind of blend in with the background, so they were kind of tough to see coming. Okay, you... Oh, the clap traps. But we've got to be getting towards the end, right? Okay, <laughs> screw the G. Who's going to go after the G? Okay, here they come again. All right, how many more are you going to throw at me? Oh, God, a freaking barrel throwing Kong, too. All right. Hopefully we don't have any more of that nonsense. Oh, jeez. And a super big guy. Oh, 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 okay, just fall off, dude. <laughs> I've got a shock that I haven't died yet. Oh, and there's the arrow. Okay, we're almost there. Just barrels rolling up the slope. Nothing to see here. And there we go, exit. Cool, all right. Yeah, I'm liking this world a lot more than the snow level, for sure. Despite the challenge, you know, kind of being a, a bit more drastic, honestly, but... Elevator antics. Oh yeah, by the way, like I said, the theming of the whole kind of world, that this is an unnatural, kind of problematic space in DK's world, as signified by the factory and the music played in the factory, just look around, it's all like polluted and gross and green and brown. Not in like the healthy green and brown, like a forest or something. Um, I, I just think it's a beautiful contrast. Well, not really beautiful, more just like an interesting contrast, I suppose. Because, you know, we're pretty late in the game, and I'll oh, come on again with the ranged enemies being just out of you. Um, we're, we're pretty late into the game, you know, so it, it makes sense that, you know, if it was going to give us a little, a little curveball, as far as setting was concerned, oh yeah, one of those death barrels is shooting it out, um, that now would be the time, you know, towards the end, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. I mean, the whole reason I wanted to play this game was because of just kind of the feelings that it's able to, uh, kind of evoke, at least in me, you know, maybe I'm just a weirdo here. <laughs> I will gladly admit that, but just kind of like the feelings and thoughts it's, an, it's able to invoke in me do just to, um, the, the setting and the atmosphere, you know, like I've said so many times already. Oh my god, okay, it's a lot of bees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I just think that's kind of fascinating. In a game, fascinating, in a game that, you know, pretty much has no narrative whatsoever. Like, the, the only text is what, like, you know, the, the NPC Kongs give you. And this is a dicey situation. You know, no real story outside of, you know, like, instruction booklet story. Uh, I just feel that, like, it's pretty incredible that just with what the game kind of shows you, um, you can kind of kind of create your own story about th the world and what's in it and how you progress through it. I, I think that resonates with me so much, as it looks like it's DK's time to shine, is because Metroid kind of did the same thing, you know, on, on the same system. So we got moving, uh, what is that, coal? I guess the Kremlins are, like, uh, harvesting, like, coal in here, too. Okay, which is just, uh, you know, destroy the environment for natural resources. Very, uh, bad guy thing to do. But, uh, that's another reason why I love Super Metroid so much is because it, it's not really the same thing, really. Like, I, I can't say I like Super Metroid because, you know, it's such, like, a gorgeous environment that you... I, how do I put this? In, in Metroid, it's more about negative emotions that it conveys. You know, uh, this feeling of being, uh, lost, uh, alone, stranded. Uh, abandoned, uh, something like that, you know, uh, something to that effect. Whereas in this one, I don't know, it's hard to put my finger on. And I can put my finger on that I just rolled off, I thought I was gonna hit a... <laughs> thought I was actually gonna hit a, a little... little tray right there, but... I, I feel like this game is different, you know, it kinda uses the same methods, I guess, but I wanna say that, like... the outcome is completely... different. Does that make any sense? I don't know. At the end of the day, I guess I could just say that I feel like, is that gonna kill me? Okay, not quite. I don't know if crush damage is a thing in this game. But I feel like they do do something similar, you know, they, they just really use a, a superior atmosphere and a lot of attention to, to graphical detail and fidelity to really uh, convey emotions in a player that can only be uh, conveyed, like, via gameplay, I guess, you know? I guess that's why I'm so drawn to it. Okay, we'll, we'll try this again. Let's wait a little bit longer this time. Okay, there we go, that worked. Am I gonna get hit with that? No, we're not quite. Okay, but I'm gonna get hit by Coconut Boy. Okay, whew, all right. You know, I'm about tired of just seeing the red bees. I, I am sick and tired of red bees. Can we stop it with the red bees? Okay, here we go, arrow. So I guess the, the way they just make the ranged enemies more difficult is they just give them a more erratic firing pattern. Like, good for you guys. Oh, we gotta go, I'm gonna fall. <sighs> That was kind of tricky, guys. It's kind of a gotcha moment. Okay, I made it that time. Let's see if I can just avoid B. McGee right here. Okay. And am I gonna have to do the same thing? Looks like it. Oh! Okay. 
Alright, that should be it. Like, we've already seen the arrow, right? If I'll let the freaking bird guy here take care of me, I'm gonna be rather mad. Okay, Diddy should be better, because I can get the jumps better, I think. There we go, and we got it. Okay, whoo! <laughs> Another pretty challenging one. Also, I feel like the levels are getting a lot longer here, too. Hey, babe. How's it going? Let me go ahead and get that save. Boy, this one's kind of a relief in a, in a world that's this difficult, you know? Like I said, I can definitely tell the levels are getting longer, getting more challenging. Poison Pond. Oh, no. Uh, this Is this, like, the most infamous level from this game? Like, I think this might be the most infamous level. Like, uh, I don't know if this is the, the last water level. It very well might be. But I'm pretty sure this has the reputation for being the hardest of the water levels, naturally, if it is indeed the last one. Um, so let's hope it doesn't give us too many problems. I'm just gonna follow the bananas for right now. Although, we can get on guard in here, the swordfish. Which I feel like will make this a bit easier. But, you know all those things I've been talking about just in this episode so far? Poison Pond just kind of exemplifies them even more, so I don't think I'm just looking too deeply into something, like... So, uh, uh, to recall all the other water levels that we've seen in the game up to this point. The whole idea is that it was this crystal clear, like, blue, beautiful, natural water, right? And we had, like, music to, to complement that, and it, it just ever it, it was just beautiful. It was gorgeous. It was something you would see in, like, a, a beautiful scuba dive session, or something like that, a beautiful swimming session. And I know the, the difficulty from this one comes from all these spiked wheels just rocketing out of freaking nowhere and hitting you in the face. I'm not really down for that. But Poison Pond, you know, it kind of exemplifies everything I was talking about. We've seen all the water levels up to this point that were so clean and beautiful, but you get here, well, it's called Poison Pond, you know, not necessarily subtle, but you get in into the level, and besides just the name, like, what a gross level. Like, look at this. Like, the beautiful blue has been replaced by, like, this puke green and just... I, I don't know, it's like filled with a lot more non-natural enemies, like the wheels, you know, they're not the actual animals. Um, so I, I think this just complements the factory even more, so like obviously when the Kremlins were uh, making some- whatever they were making with the factory and the coal they were- they were getting from- from the environment, they were dumping all their pollution and waste here, you know, so. Again, uh, just a, a fantastic contrast to uh, what came before, and I think suits the- the world uh, very, very well, actually. Okay, so we haven't died yet. And the minute I say that I died, like literally the second, I, I was about to be like, okay, Poison Pond, uh, this legendarily hard level, and I got to the midpoint. <laughs> and as soon as I went to pat myself on the back for that, I freaking died. Okay, fine. I, I can live with that. And these things aren't moving as fast as I remember. Although the thing about this is that since, you know, we have the fog now, the really ugly fog and the, the really ugly background, as far as color is concerned, Seeing those little fishies is a lot harder, too, so I just need to focus on everything here, pretty much. I can't believe I was about to brag and then just all of this happens. Dude, stay away from me. Okay, I think we can actually get on guard, like, around here somewhere. I think it's past, like, Shark Jr. here. I can't get past that, though. Thought maybe I could go over him, that is not the case. Um... Maybe I have to go down. That could be it, yeah. I know you- we don't want to follow the bananas. Oh god, I went too fast. Okay, get the little hidden banana stash down there, I guess. Okay, so we got the fish that comes here. Actually, gonna stay higher up this time, yeah. So if we go down, I believe we can circumvent the shark. Oh man, getting past that's gonna be rough. Go, go, go! Oh, okay. Okay. And go, go, go! And there's our guard, yes, okay, I remember this one. I remember watching a playthrough that a guy did and he, he was- he had to be sure to get on guard because uh, the level's pretty brutal. But we're about halfway through it, so yeah, look, that's what I'm talking about. You see how fast that thing is rocketing out? Okay, I hope that I'm going this way. I mean, these levels have always been a bit more wide open. Uh, oh, there you are, DK. A bit more wide open, uh, kind of uh, layout-wise, than the actual levels. Because we're not just going left to right like you would a regular level, right? Um, so I can just only hope I'm going the right way, I guess. Slow and steady, though. I think this is when... Yeah, that right there. I don't know how you're supposed to know that's coming, but as long as we just inch along very slowly, don't think we'll have too much of an issue. Okay, this is another one of those triple circle rotating ones. Okay, oh boy, yeah. That was kind of difficult to see. And I don't know how I dashed with on guard right there. I did not press the button, so maybe, maybe it's like Mega Man X. Maybe if you like double tap, he kind of shoots forward, which I don't want to do right now because shooting forward with on guard 
it's kind of a r risky proposition because, um, especially when we're, we're kind of cramped in level design like this, because you just kind of rocket forward and you don't know what's coming up, so it could be an enemy or a wheel that you could just, just go straight into. Okay, oh, no, let's get in here. Boy, the timing for this is precise. Okay, yeah, there may be something up there, but I'm not going to deal with it. Okay, the fishies, though, on guard actually can deal with. There we go, okay. Oh, and there's the G. I actually got all of them for once. Extra life! And I lost quite a few lives on this one. Although they were all around, like, the checkpoint barrel. Of all things, just go, just go, just go. Bye, on guard. Oh, we're at the exit. I did it. Woo! <laughs> okay, poison pod. You know, I thought that level would give me the most trouble out of all of them so far. But that crown still belongs to one of those stupid ice levels. Or maybe it'll belong to this one. Minecart madness. Great.